guys, welcome to week seven. We are still looking at algebraic expressions this week. Um, we are first gonna start the week off with simplifying expressions by combining like terms and using the distributive property. So this is gonna be an intro video. There's gonna be a lot of questions for you to be answering during this ed puzzle to go along with the lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we can start combining like terms, we need to review the terms or the vocabulary for algebraic expressions. So remember an algebraic expression contains numbers and variables but does not have an equal sign and must also have operations. So if we're looking here, we see that we have our variables and we have coefficients and these numbers in front of a variable is called a coefficient. This number tells me how many of these variables I have. And that's why we say it's multiplying because it means I have three groups of X, five groups of Y. Then we have our constant. The nine right here is the constant. As you can see, there's no variable. And if we remember that a variable means change is happening, our constant means that this number nine is not changing. There's nothing there to change it. The most important thing for today is these terms. If you notice, they have three X as a term, five Y as a term, and nine as a term. So in between operations is where you find your terms. So let's get started at looking at how do we combine like terms. Okay, so first we're gonna look at combining like terms using the algebra tile idea that we talked about on Friday um, in your activity of intro to algebra tiles. So here you can see I've set up the algebra tiles ahead of time. We have two X plus, we have three more X's plus a unit of one plus five units right there. So if we thought about combining like terms, we could put these together and we could say, well, I have five X. And then we could combine these together in a group and we could say plus six. So when we're combining like terms, we're combining things that are alike. And one thing I like to do is color code it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use the same colors. So we have that two X and three X, which made five X. And then we have one and five, which made a total of six. Okay, let's keep going. So if we're looking at the same thing, once again, I have these tiles thing out, laid out for us. So we have a total of six X's plus an X. Notice I just put an X. So it's understood that when a variable is just by itself and there's not a number in front of it, that there is an invisible one here. Like it's understood that there is a one, that means one X. So this right here represents one X. Then we have our two and five, and notice I'm doing the color coding to help. So then if I wanted to simplify my expression, mean putting things that are together alike, I would say I have a total of seven X's plus seven units. You cannot combine these because as you can see here in this model, they're not the same things, and that's why you cannot combine them because we can only combine things that are the same. So it's just like saying if you had seven cats, plus seven dogs, you can't say that you have 14 cats. So we cannot combine seven X plus seven. Okay, let's do a few without the models. So I'm gonna use the idea of color coding to help us better understand. So if I'm looking at the number 12, it is just a number. Nine X has a variable and then five is just a number. So I colored those two because they're the same thing. They're just plain numbers. So 12 plus five gives you 17. And then the nine X would just say nine X. So it would say plus nine X. Okay, so then if I'm looking here, I have eight Y and 15 Y are the same, which would make a total of 23 Y's. And then I have a seven X and then three is an independent, is it just a number? So I can't combine those because they're, this three does not have an X. So I would just write this as 23Y plus seven X plus three. And that is as simple as you can simplify it. Okay, so on our last one, I'm gonna color code again. I have five A right here. Here's another A and then there's no other A's. So then I go to my B's. I have seven B and I have three B and the nine is not so a have a variable. So I'm just gonna put it as a green. So then we combine the things that are like five A plus A. Remember 
we talked about a, a minute ago that if it's just a variable, it means that there is one A there. So 5A plus 1A is 6As plus 7B plus 3B is 10B plus the 9. So we're not going to do anything with that 9 because it doesn't have a variable. And that is your final answer for that. Okay, now it's your turn to show me what you know. So there are going to be these three questions, um, and then we are going to go over them after you answer them on the Edpuzzle. Welcome back. Let's go over these three problems. So on this one, you have 6x and 5x, so you should say that was 11x. And then you have plus 7 plus 2, which makes a total of 9. So you should have typed 11x plus 9. Next, we have 14 and 7, and then we have a z and a 3z. So my 14 plus 7 makes 21. z plus 3z, you've got to remember that z is a 1z, makes 4z. Okay, and then on our last one, there's a lot going on. We have 8a, that's the only a. So then I have 5B, 2B, and a 6B. So those are all Bs, so they all go together. And then 12 is by itself. So the 8A is just going to stay 8A plus 5B plus 2B is 7B plus the 6B is 13Bs plus 12. So hopefully you got all of those combining like terms correct. Okay, now let's talk about the distributive property. We've talked about the distributive property when we were talking about mathematical operations. But now we're gonna look at it. how does it apply to algebra concepts. And some of you have this in your notes um, if you go back and look at your mathematical operations notes. Um, you can see I marked out, because I actually started with five orders and it took up the entire screen. So I'm re-recording this and we're gonna do three orders instead. So it's like we have three orders of three burgers. So a family is ordering three burgers and they're also ordering four fries. Okay, that's one group of that. Then another family is ordering. So you have to kind of think that maybe you're the manager and you're having to manage how much is being cooked. Okay, and then my last group orders the exact same thing. Okay, so in math we see this, oh, there are nine burgers, and then we would say, oh, there's 12 fries. Well. An easy way to look at this in math is using the distributed property. We have three orders of three burgers plus four fries, just like that. And so then you could solve it, and the distributed property is saying that I will multiply the number on the outside to everything on the inside. It's saying you have three groups of. Well, if I have three groups of three burgers, we can see them right here you have nine burgers. And if I have three groups of four french fries, you can see you have 12 french fries. So that is the distributed property right there in itself. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, this time we're gonna visualize three candy bags with five pieces of chocolate and two lollipops. So we have, we're gonna make our three candy bags. So here is one of our candy bags with the five pieces and two lollipops. So there's one. We're gonna make another bag with our five pieces. Need one more. And our two lollipops. And one more bag. We have five pieces of chocolate. And of course I picked Hershey's because it's the best. Um, if you don't think so, then I'm sorry. I don't know what chocolate you're eating. Um, unless it's German chocolate, I will tell you that. German chocolate is amazing. Um, or any chocolate that's not in the United States is usually pretty good. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And you can see that we would have 15 pieces of chocolate and six lollipops. So mathematically, this would look like I have three bags of five pieces of chocolate plus two, and then I'm gonna use a capital L for lollipop because the lowercase l looks like a one. So, and then to simplify this, we would say, well, three groups of five is 15 chocolates plus 
three groups of lo two lollipops is six lollipops. And we can see that here in our example. Okay, let's do it without some actual drawings. We are almost to the end. Thank you for sticking. We're almost there. Keep going. Okay, so the distributive property is saying that we have four groups of everything inside this parentheses. So it's saying I have four groups of 2x. So 4 times 2x is 8x. And then I have four groups of the 5. So that'd be plus 20. Okay, it's the exact same thing as if you wrote 2x plus 5 plus 2x plus 5 plus 2x plus 5 plus 2x plus 5 and then combined like terms. Okay, so here we have nine groups of 3x, which would be 27x, and then nine groups of 2y, which would be plus 18y. So you can kind of see I'm just multiplying the number on the outside to the number on, on the inside, which goes back to what we learned in order of operations, that a number outside parentheses means to multiply. Everything um, that we learn kind of spirals within this, the topics. Okay, so right here we have to remember this a represents 1a. So we have 6 times a, which is 6a, and then 6 times 4b, which would be 24b. And that's it. That's distributed property. Okay, you're going to do three problems on your own, and then we're going to review them. Okay, here's your three problems on your own, and then when you come back, we'll go over it. Okay, welcome back. Let's check our answers. So hopefully you did two groups of 4x, which is 8x, and then two groups of 6, which is 12. And then next you did four groups of 3y, which is 12y, plus four groups of 2z, which is 8z. Okay, and then here's that tricky one. We have to remember that means 1a so seven groups of A is seven A, and then seven groups of three B would be 21 B. And that's it. Okay, so that is your lesson for today. If you have any questions, feel free to jump on the Google Meet today. Don't forget to do your weekly practice this week. Um, I will say kudos, 28 out of 34 completed their weekly practice on time by Friday, by the time I graded them on Friday. Really proud of you. If you have not completed last week's weekly practice, I highly recommend you do that. Have a great day, guys. Bye.